Hey, what's up YouTube? I just got back from the hardware store and today I'm going to show you guys how to make your own homemade flow bench. I play around with a lot of small engines and I'm always trying to drag more power out of them. The best way to do that is with the cylinder head. Your cylinder head is really your engine. Everything else is to back it up and to be in tune with it. Your bottom end is your strength of your engine. So to make more power, you got to port, polish, shape, put bigger valves in, stronger valve springs. There's a lot of little things you got to do to your cylinder head to get it just right for your engine. So how they do that is they put that cylinder head on a flow bench and that flow bench tells them if that change that they made to that cylinder head is helping it or not. So I picked some stuff up from the hardware store. I got some PVC pipe and a few different fittings. You need something with the same inside diameter as your cylinder wall. This piece right here is the closest thing I found in PVC that is the size of my cylinder wall. It's a tiny bit smaller. So I'm gonna have to take a little bit out of this. My vacuum that I just bought now, you could use a bigger vacuum. Um, I think this flows 60 CFM, so you could definitely have a bigger vacuum. It's still going to tell me if I've improved on my design or not, or if what I've done has helped my cylinder head. Now, this can flow different cylinder heads, but for each cylinder head that I want to flow, I'll have to have a separate adapter for. This right here is going to be for a 2.756 inch bore which a Predator engine has, the 212 Predator. So I can get different adapters and fit them to this pipe so I can flow different cylinder heads. So I have the grate cut off here. This was for a shower drain. And it was the only thing I found that was pretty close. So I have 36 grit sandpaper here. What we're gonna do, Let's go around the inside of this until I have the right inside diameter, which is pretty close. I just need to take a little bit out until I get 2.756 inches or until this piston just slides in there. All right, guys, what I recommend is buy a pipe that is the right inside diameter to start with. You could probably get one online, I'm not sure try to find one a little harder than I did. It's a lot of work. I eventually, I was doing it by hand and I eventually wrapped a bunch of uh, belt sander belts, old ones, up and taped it. And then I put these pieces of sandpaper on it off my uh, disc sander, for my disc sander. And now I'm just doing this. The piston is starting to get close to fitting. It starts to slide in this side. I can actually probably shove it in there. Yeah, it's all just started in there. Um, so I almost have it. All right, so now I've sanded the inside of this until my piston slips in it fairly easy. And I know now, actually my little ring just went in. So, probably a little bigger. So, I have a head gasket that fits this engine. I'm gonna pull my dowel pins out. I have this piece of plexiglass here. I'm gonna hold my head gasket on there and trace it. guys now I'm cutting a few pieces of plywood to make a box out of I got three pieces cut already I gotta cut I gotta cut three more
All right. So what I'm doing here is I have my first two pieces I'm putting together. Now these are going to be the hardest pieces. They actually have jigs to hold the wood like this, but I don't have one. So got to hold it by hand. Now I have one screw started. I can drill these other two, and I'm holding this nice and flush right here. Now, all I'm doing is tacking that together. Now that I've drilled my pilot holes, take my screws back out. I'm also gonna make a reference mark on this. just to remember how it went so I don't flip it around like that my screws not line up now my first piece that I went through I need to drill the holes out even bigger so it will pull it tight to the second piece make sure you go all the way off the end All right, now I have my box all put together. I'm cutting out one side of it so I can put plexiglass in there and have one see-through side. And that's for later on, if I want to upgrade it and be able to do other stuff with it. plexiglass on the front of this and have it where I can see inside it so later on if I want to take and make smoke trails to check my laminar flow or just be able to see what's going on inside there clear movable front all right guys I got my two tubes in here I let them dry overnight some of the glue sucked back in here still not completely dry it's pretty close though um, I'm just out here in the morning before I head off for work. I got about a half an hour or so to mess around with this. I'm going to show you guys kind of how I plan on setting this thing up and how it's going to work. This right here is my adapter that I made for my cylinder head. I'm going to have to clean this up a little bit. It has a little edge that hangs over. I'll have to take and die grinder that off. But that slides on here just like that then your cylinder head has your dowel pins in it now I'll have to set this up different for a hemi head if I want to flow a hemi head the two dowels on it are right here and right here instead of like that that's the difference between a hemi and a non hemi the hemi head is going to have a dowel right here so this will sit on here just like that Boom. Now, what I need to do is I need to figure out a way to attach bolts to my adapter here. And that way, I can screw some nuts on this and have this actually seal down. Make some type of gasket for it, not out of metal, just some you would use for an intake gasket. Or, you know, I have a sheet of gasket material that I can use to make a gasket. The part that attaches to your vacuum will 
go on here like this. Now there's a few more things that I need to do to this to make this work. I need to, I'll drill holes and make it so it screws on here. Then I'll take this off here and I'll wipe a light bead of silicone around this. And that will work like a gasket for when I put that face of that on here. All right, guys, what I've done with this spark plug is I've stuck it on my bandsaw and I've cut this little ring off here. I just barely ran my bandsaw along so it's just touching the top of this nut right here that's made onto the spark plug. So you're cutting this much off of it, this little thing right here. Okay, as soon as you do that, the spark plug, like nothing, will pull apart. Now, it sucks that I had to use one of my good plugs for this. Um, but it is what it is. I'll buy another one. Now, we need to epoxy a tube into here. And then this will screw into here. Now, I have some clear tubing. I have some, a decent length of clear tubing in here. I actually bought this stuff cheap at Rural King. It was only like 50 cents or 70 something cents a foot or it, whatever it was. It was pretty cheap compared to buying fuel on. All right, so this is my spark plug. I epoxied a piece of barb in there and I actually had to cut it off of a fuel shutoff valve. I didn't have a regular barb. Um, I stuck the end that would normally go on the hose inside this just because it fit in the hole and centered itself like that now the hose might not go on this easy if it doesn't i'll put a little bevel on the edge of it i'll probably deburr it anyways once it dries but as you see you can see through it it's a nice straight shot through the spark plug all right so now i'm going to lay this board out for my tubing so I'm just checking and make sure that I have plenty of tubing to do whatever I need to do, which it looks like I do. Now, I'm going to draw lines between these. Now that's where we're going to start our marks at. Now, I'm going to start going up from here. I'm going to go every inch. Alright, I have this all laid out and numbered. There's 40 one inch marks on it. I don't need that many. You're better off having too many marks than not enough because I'm going to put, or there's 28 inches of water in here. There's going to be 14 on each side and it's going to need room to travel up. So that gives it plenty. Now, what I've done is I cut pieces of tubing and I've actually used them as my hold downs. I cut two inch pieces and I sliced them long way so I could go like this with them. Now what I'm going to do is put the last one on here. I'm just holding them on here like this. And you can pull your hose tight so it's straight, kind of stretch it a little bit. Not too much, we're just going to pull back out.
drive a screw on one side of it. Get it exactly where you want it. Now drive this one kind of close to the hose so it actually pulls down on it. Let's snug them both down. Now, if you look, I can pull that tight and it holds it. All right, guys, I have my flow bench finished here. Now, what I've done is I made this frame to go up over my cylinder head. I have two bolts right here. There's a nut welded on the bottom of this frame. The bolt goes through it. I turn the bolt and it pushes my valve down. Now, I have this magnetic base set up. I just screwed a piece of sheet metal to the box so the magnet would stick to it. And I got a dial indicator here. So what I do is I press that dial indicator a good ways down and I zero it out. So I have to count backwards, but it's pretty easy to do the math in your head. And what I've done here is I've stuck a piece of tape on this. So I'm going to map this out at different valve lifts. I have to start at 125 thousandths. At 100 thousandths, it wants to suck the liquid all the way up through here. It's not open enough. It has too much restriction. It wants to suck it through there. So I'm going to try to prove on that area so it doesn't do that anymore. Now I need to turn this on and I'm going to map this out at different valve lifts. Right now I have this set where I have the valve open 125 thousandths. So I'm going to turn this on. video here we've got this cylinder head all laid out in stock form and what I mean by laid out is I've got marks on my flow bench now or actually you call that a manometer um, I've got that all laid out in the next episode we're going to go through this cylinder head and try to make improvements to it so we'll actually be able to measure if it's an improvement or not an improvement what's going to help us what isn't I appreciate you guys watching if you like this kind of stuff subscribe to my channel I have a lot more to come I also got a pretty big surprise I plan on doing a lot of testing with these engines and seeing what makes power and what doesn't and how much power they do make don't forget to like subscribe share it with your friends you guys have a good one